All right, let's continue on in our creation of this form. Now let's make this a little more comprehensive and perhaps a little more realistic. For instance, company name might not be what at, what's asked for at the get-go. So I'm going to make the person's name be the first thing requested on the form. So I can copy the whole form element with cut and paste it down here. Control V. Like so. All right. Now up here, I'm going to insert form text field first name enter and again here insert form text field last name All right. What else might you include here? Well, if it's a sensitive um, piece of information you're asking for, let's let's try that. Let's insert a text field for social security number. That may be something else that's requested. So, all right. Let's hit enter. And now we see that perhaps the table that we inserted is a little too narrow. So we can grab this, move it over, until this is all moved up to one line. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, let's tell the user what to do here. Being that we're talking about a poetry site, let's give it another space in between there. And let's change the color to this color, for instance make it bold. I'm going to say, because this is a poetry site, I'm going to make something up that's pertinent for poetry contest submissions. Please fill out the following. All right. Now, when we're in the table in which the form has been inserted, when we're clicked on the actual text, the requesting text, in this case like first name, the properties will come up for the text itself, not unlike text that you're inserting um, on a page that's outside the form or outside the table, like up here. It's just asking what format, what properties do you want for that particular text. But when you're clicked in the actual box, the field that you're going to have the user enter the information in, now the properties change. Now it's saying, OK, now you're talking about the actual form element. Um, here we could rename the ID for it. Remember, the ID that we've been putting in is not displayed here. That's just for our reference, the ID. What we put in here is different and can even be modified directly from here, like so. But now that we're clicked on the element itself, we can choose a max number of characters. So, for instance, for Social Security number, you might choose a maximum number of characters of what? How long is a Social Security number? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. But if you're going to include the dashes, you might want to include another ten. If a person puts the dashes in. Now here's what's very interesting that you want to remember, and that's to mark that field as a password field. In other words, a sensitive text field where you're not going to want to display the characters on the screen as they're typed, as you might want to do with a social security number. And it'll block out so you won't see the actual characters displayed. And we'll see that when we preview it. All right. Let's now ask for a couple more items. 
another text field. Let's insert um, city. Let's request that. And then we don't have to even go to the next line if we want to request um, the state. Maybe we feel like we have enough room here. So we can insert another text field in the same cell um, state, like so. But we might have to expand the table in order, again, to fit it. like so. Now I may delete some of these colons because I'm now surmising that they're unnecessary. All right, let's insert another element that's not just a regular text element. Let's go insert form, text area. Now if you remember the difference between these two is that this allows the user to enter a larger amount of text. So let's call this sample and let's see, we're talking about poetry, so um, enter a sample piece of your work. Enter. Now you see those scroll bars, a larger space, it expanded the cell. So, the net, so that the user now is aware that, oh, I can enter a larger, a larger piece in here. You can still enter um, you know, a few different options here. For instance, this is multi-line instead of single line like we used up here. All right. Let's add another button. We're not going to use this button. If you remember, that's used at the end to submit or continue. Now let's use checkbox. Now let's ask, let's call this one um, where, because I'm going to ask where did you hear about us. You see that oftentimes on surveys and forums. Now notice what happens if I choose before form item rather than after. In this case it's saying do you want this text to appear before the form item or, the, or after. Now I'm choosing before. So I'm going to enter here in internet and now I'm going to insert another text box or check box, I'm sorry, called newspaper. And I'm going to I'm going to leave this where it is. In this case, I wanted it to be after. I wanted the text to appear after the form item. That's why I chose after for this one and before for this one. Now, with text boxes, or check boxes, I'm sorry, you can check both boxes or none of the boxes even if you didn't want to. So in this case, a person might have heard about the company from both the newspaper and the internet. So this, in this case, check boxes would maybe be a wiser maneuver. So let's let's save it in preview. Control S, F12 to preview, and let's actually interact with our form. So let's say we enter some, some data in here. First name John Stone Company name Gotham City News social security number. You see how it's ju you're just seeing large circles that are filled in. And that's because we entered or defined it as a password field. So very useful. And then city, let's just use what we've been using, Gotham, state, California. Here's where we would enter um, a larger amount of text and if it was long enough to fill this space and beyond then we would be able to access the scroll bars. And here's our checkboxes. Where did you hear about us? So newspaper, internet. You could 
check both or one. So there's a few more examples of inserting text elements and now we've just interacted with the actual page so you can see how they function.